Hi, how you doing? Chris here. This is my introduction to my double bass lesson series, and I wanted to give you some basic information on what this is about, why I'm doing it. So the purpose of this is different from other lessons that you might find out there. It's from my perspective as a student going through the process of learning to play the double bass. And it will essentially be my uh, online journal or log of uh, how I've uh, gone through each lesson, any struggles I've had, and how I've grown. And you're free to leave comments or questions, and I'll do my best to respond. Another question uh, people might have that I had was, am I too old to start learning the double bass? Um, they say you're never too old. Uh, it depends on your... Uh, your background, how much musical experience you've had. If you've had none, it may take you longer. Uh, if you have uh, extensive musical experience, it'll take you uh, less time. Um, my uh, bass teacher says that uh, he finds that adult students learn better than children. Um, maybe not as fast, but um, he finds that they're more disciplined and more focused. And of course, that's a general statement. and. Uh, you know, it's going to vary for each person. How often do you need to practice? Um, I try to practice a little bit every day. It's always better to uh, do it consistently on a regular basis than to cram for the exam the night before. Um, when you're starting out, I'd recommend uh, to keep it short, 10 to 15 minutes uh, a day, and then as you progress, you can increase that time. Right now, when I practice, um, I try to practice about an hour and I divide that up among different uh, things that I want to focus on. Um, another question could be, well, my fingers hurt. Should I stop practicing? Well, unfortunately, that goes with the territory. Um, you're going to put soft fingers on hard steel and naturally they're going to hurt. Um, so as you begin to play the instrument, uh, you'll start to develop calluses on your fingertips. And, um, you know, it may take a couple weeks, but uh, by the time you have the calluses build up, it shouldn't be too painful. If it is, if you've got some kind of severe pain, you need to see your doctor. Uh, and especially if somewhere else in your body hurts, if you have a pain in your wrist or your shoulder or your neck, uh, stop practicing until you figure out what's going on um, and have it looked at. Um, what kind of strings should you use? I replaced the strings on this bass after I purchased it. It came with um, factory strings. I'm not sure what they were. Um, but I ended up buying strings from Tomastic Enfeld. Uh, they're an Austrian manufacturer of really fine strings for a variety of instruments. And I've used their jazz flats on my electric bass and uh, they're awesome strings. Bass strings for a, a double bass are not cheap. Um, you can expect to pay at least a hundred dollars more, uh, probably close to two hundred dollars. I think these strings were two hundred and twenty-five dollars. I don't remember exactly, um, but they're not like guitar strings that you're going to change every month. Um, they should be good for at least a year, um, maybe longer. I don't. These uh, I've had these on for about nine months now, and they're still great. Uh, and I clean them regularly. So that uh, extends their life. It's something that you ought to do too. Uh, what else? Um, what kind of rosin should you use? I had no idea starting out, so I took what they gave me at the music store, and I guess this is a very popular rosin, and that's maybe why it's called Pops. I don't know why it's called Pops, but uh, this is a popular base rosin. It's called Pops Base Rosin. Um, it's in a little red container and it's made in Houston, Texas. And uh, it's in a little paper cup and it's kind of a light amber color. Um, it works pretty good. It's, uh, it grips really well but leaves a lot of rosin dust. And uh, it's kind of soft. I left it out in the sun in the car one time and it started to melt just like uh, it was turning to liquid. So uh, you want to keep it in a cool spot. After the pops, I um, 
tried another rosin called Nyman, Nyman Hearts, and this is made in Sweden, and uh, it's a little bit harder than the Pops, and it's also darker, and uh, it's in a foil container. By the way, be careful that you keep that foil peeled way down and keep it away from the hair on your bow, because I learned that uh, if you get one of your bow hairs in there, it'll cut it off pretty quickly. Um, the diamond works great. Um, I used that for a while, quite a long time, on my uh, first bow, my student bow. Um, and then I purchased a, uh, uh, another bow that has, uh, it's strung with black horsehair, and uh, I've been using rosin from Colstein on that. Uh, they have uh, two different grades that I purchased. One is called All Weather, and it says AW on the lid. The Colstein rosin is in a little gold uh, container, and uh, it's packaged very nicely in a little rubber or silicone uh, container inside the gold container, and then you just roll the sides down when you want to uh, rosin your bow. And uh, it works great too. It, um, my um, black horsehair bow seems to like a lot of rosin, so I've been using the, the Colstein soft rosin on that lately. Anyway, that's what I know about rosin. Um, what else? How do you know when to move on to the next stage? That's kind of an individual thing, and that's hard for me to say, but basically you need to know, uh, feel comfortable with what you've covered and confident that you're playing it well. Um, and if you don't have an instructor, I'd uh, encourage you to find one, and uh, they can guide you on uh, your progress. So I uh, hope that helps, and uh, I'll look for comments from you, and uh, I'll move on to the next lesson in my double bass series. Thanks for joining.